experience of someone who comes up to the Manhattanville Project site today is one where you see tall cranes and, and a lot of uh, equipment. And as a construction project, the initial phase of development uh, of Manhattanville, which includes construction of the Jerome L. Green Science Center, is literally impacting two full city blocks. Columbia University said we want to do this clean construction and we want to do it right. This was a collaborative effort with the Columbia Manhattanville Development Group, Columbia Sustainability Office, and the Columbia School of Public Health, working with Environmental Defense Fund to come up with different measures to mitigate and reduce the impact on the community as much as possible. We wanted to minimize our impacts on air quality in Harlem, and one of the best ways to do that in the short term was through uh, developing a clean construction program. From the beginning, we've done very careful planning to look at areas where we would intersect with the public and try to proactively avoid creating construction nuisances. We're going to great lengths to make sure that we have a relatively dust-free construction site. Everything from washing the undercarriages of every vehicle before it leaves the construction site to make sure that fugitive dust uh, is kept to an absolute minimum. The wheel wash is automatic. A sensor triggers the wheel wash to come on and water sprays on the truck. The water flows back into the bottom and is recycled. What you see here is the collection of the amount of dirt that would have normally tracked out on this public throughway. We know that the soot levels in New York City are already unsafe to breathe. And the, the, the big challenge is, is how to reduce those levels of soot pollution. So we're looking at a diesel particulate filter that has been installed on a Lieber crane. It's a production item. And if you notice, there are three exhaust pipes sticking out. There's no black soot and there is no smell of diesel while the machine is running. There is a zero tolerance policy for construction equipment going on the site that is not outfitted with these state-of-the-art diesel particulate filters and ultra-low sulfur diesel being used in it electrifying the construction site so that there's less use of diesel fuel to power equipment makes a real contribution to the air quality, which is very important to the university and very important to our local community members. Whenever it is practical, uh, we try to find if electrical power can be used. Stationary items like the slurry plant lends itself very well to being driven by electric motors. When I went to see the Manhattanville construction site, what struck me was that it was very quiet almost, very clean and um, calm. So the perimeter of the entire project site is covered by a jersey barrier and a plywood fence on the inside of which there is a noise blanket to mitigate or absorb sound that can possibly leave the project site. So we have a um, very robust, good working relationship with, with lots of different environmental organizations and city organizations. And I think that really adds to the integrity of what it is that we're trying to do. And then we're also able to share with them things that we've learned along the way. So it enriches all of our abilities to make New York City a more sustainable place to live. Construction can either be an environmental nuisance to people or construction can work with a community to help make livable cities. So the process of construction is being kept as clean as possible. And then ultimately, built into the design will be a whole array of environmental and sustainability practices, all of which will go to reducing the overall energy consumption of the building and making for a healthy building. Manhattanville expansion project can serve as a model for other cities, other universities, on how to tackle such an expansion in a sustainable way, uh, minimizing the impact it has on the community as much as possible.